After the long winters of the farmer's premonition had passed, normal service resumed on the North Western Railway. Henry's dining service was still just as popular as it had been since day one, without the minor James based hiccup, and had run on a bi weekly basis ever since. One day, the fat controller decided to treat himself and his wife to a meal on the train. Henry couldn't help being proud of the honour and boshed James about while he was shunting his train. The fat controller hadn't quite forgiven James for sabotaging the service's maiden trip and secretly felt James did a better job in the yard than the other shunters, so it kept him there a little while longer. Come on, James. You can't be holding up today's train. Sir Topham Hatt will be on board with his wife, and you wouldn't want to upset them, would you? You'd better be careful, Henry. Anyone would think you'd let us get to your smoke box. Oh, you should know. If anyone on this island can recognize hubris, it's you. James angrily let off steam and scuttled away to fetch the next coach. He didn't really mind shunting. At least he could rest a little while in a siding where people could see his paintwork glistening. It was the engines who felt compelled to order him about and look down their buffs at him who annoyed him. Engines like Henry. I think I'm ready to order pudding. Pudding already? Oh yes, my dear. I've had many passengers recommend the uh, creme brulee. I'll have that, garçon. The creme brulee, sir? Oh, very well. I'll have that instead. Make that too. I'll have it also. It sounds delicious. Very well. Two creme brulees for Mr. and Mrs. Hatt. Henry approached the footbridge where the top crossed the main line. He saw some boys standing on the bridge waving to him excitedly. As he ducked underneath, he gave a friendly whistle and called out, Hello! But the boys weren't waving to say hello. In fact, Henry was certain he heard one of the boys shriek the word, Glory! The What? Henry's driver whipped around in the cab to see smoke and flames pouring through the kitchen window of the restaurant carriage. A word, you're right. He shot back around, stole the brake and jammed it on hard. Henry felt a terrific pain as the driver came to shut off steam. guard wasted no time in making his way along the train to evacuate the passengers. The driver came to help in accounting for them all, while the fireman ran along the line to ring for emergency services. Until the fire brigade could bring their high power water hoses, the only defense they had against the growing inferno was one chef waving his floppy hat, bent on revenge for the loss of his creme brulee. There was an impatient atmosphere at Natford Station. Gordon, again heading the enthusiast special, the Northwestern Splendor, was waiting to leave. No one knew yet why there were delays, only that the line was blocked beyond Wellsby. James rolled into the station on the line alongside Gordon. He was getting rather bored of sitting in the siding. Everyone was too interested to see what was causing the delays then to notice his paintwork. Can someone please explain to me what or who is delaying my train? I know as much as you do, Gordon. James sighed, eyeing the red signals of the gantry. Perhaps a coach is derailed and blocked all three lines? I mean, beyond Wellsworth is Edward's line to Brendam. My guess is those hollow little twins Bill and Ben have been up to their old tricks. James and Gordon's postulating was interrupted. First by the humming of a diesel, them by the smell of burning.
Henry was slowly shunted into the station, as well as what remained of the restaurant carriage. The paintwork on the kitchen end had begun to peel away under the heat, scorched and bubbled. Smoke had settled and coated the glass in its choking fur, and continued to seep through the cracks between the warped panels and framework. It had been an ironic fate, considering one of Henry's remarks about the prospect of James heading the service, but to see the carriage now in its sorry state was painful. As the diesel came to a standstill, the vac controller and his wife emerged from his cab. His wife was unamused, and he was agitated. Oh dear, oh dear. This is not what I anticipated when we launched in this service. Not only have we lost the very popular restaurant carriage in this incident, but Henry will have to be sent for repairs at the works. Therefore, we'll need someone to run what survives of this train in his absence. James's eyes flitted from one side to another. He daren't speak. The fat controller, having spent some moments shaking his head in dismay, looked up and noticed James for the first time. No longer as a shunting engine, but again as a mixed traffic engine. An engine who could fill in for Henry. James, I trust you've had long enough to consider what you did. Oh yes, sir. I'm truly sorry, sir. He has worked very hard to arrange our trains and make sure we all keep good time. I can testify to it. He realizes what he did was wrong. He's worked so hard for your forgiveness. He deserves to pull passenger trains again, sir. The fat controller pondered and observed Henry's sincerity. He then turned enthusiastically to the red engine. Very well, James. Starting tomorrow morning, Henry's passenger train shall be yours. I shall make other arrangements upon Henry's return from the works. As for the restaurant carriage... Uh, it's not even fit for newspapers now. Well, aside from one or two humiliating headlines in tomorrow's papers. James and Gordon frowned. They wished there was more that they could do, but they would be both too busy with their own trains to help. The restaurant carriage remained for several days in Netford Yards. Each morning when Edgar arrived to arrange the first train, it appeared more and more decrepit. Eventually, everyone grew to think of the dining service as just being a thing of the past once again. But still the engines wished they could improve the situation. James and Gordon were slowly formulating a plan, using every precious moment in the sheds or at the big station to develop their ideas. Finally, they were ready to present the proposal to the fat controller. The suggestion amused him, but he agreed to it. One morning, Gorn steamed into the station to collect the Northwestern Splendor. Egg was just backing up to his train with a support coach, and the shunter's pole was poised for the coupling hook. No, no, no. That's for James's train today, not mine. Egg's crew looked towards the support coach. James needs a support coach? No, that's not a support coach. It's the new dining car. It looks like a support coach to me, Gordon. Yes, that coach is for me today. Edgar's driver, still in disbelief, eyed the new headboard James sported. It read the greasy spoon and was now too shocked to form words. The fat controller had this idea to relaunch the service when he ate the support coach. So I'm relaunching it. We're relaunching it as the support coach. It has cooking facilities, primitive facilities, but entirely adequate. Well, come along then. If we want the greasy spoon to be a success, we can't have you dawdling about. The driver asked no more questions. He feared he'd end up even more puzzled. The service piqued the curiosity of the passengers. They thought it odd, but quaint, with a strange charm. It required no booking, it was offered for free. If passengers wanted food, the guard would take the orders, and the food would be served by James's crew and volunteers during longer station stops. The food was nothing exotic or overly exciting, 
a special request on behalf of that controller for no cream brew leaf, but the passengers didn't mind. The greasy spoon was only an innocent suggestion from Gordon and James, and was never intended for a full-time service. But it proved to be surprisingly popular. When the news reached Thomas's branch line, Daisy couldn't understand the popular image the coach had. Why would passengers want to eat sloppy sandwiches with gravy and ruin their best clothes in a bumpy carriage? Maybe get yourself a stove installed and see if your passengers approve. Oh, well, that's just silly. Just like the greasy spoon itself. Where do you even get such a name? The Fat Controller has plans to bring back the greasy spoon on a regular basis whenever the sport coach is available. Something else he tried toying with was taking advantage of the high-speed train withdrawal on the mainland and investing in one or two buffet cars to run with Pippin Emma. I can assure you that a dining service of some kind will always be on his mind, for whenever he looks through the window of his office at the big station, he will spy in the station sidings the remain of a coach. To him, there are remains of an old newspaper van, not of the restaurant carriage. The real restaurant carriage serves fried bacon and egg sandwiches, not cream brulee. <laughs> <laughs>